Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'll be repairing the Samsung Galaxy Watch Active 2. It's a little worse for wear with scratches all over and a damaged OLED display. With no cracks, it's odd to see that the display is damaged. Has it failed due to a manufacturing fault or is there something the seller of this watch didn't disclose to me? I guess we'll find out when we open it up. I purchased this watch online in its current condition. Like many of the things I buy, it came literally thrown in a parcel. Compared against my Galaxy Watch, you can see just how scuffed and broken this one is. Despite being the same models with Samsung bands, the second watch has UJHC and UJHJ printed onto each band, and has a more limited range of movement compared to mine. Did Samsung revise aspects of the watch throughout its production? I don't know, but it's time to disassemble this watch. Unlike the Apple Watches I've repaired in the past, the Galaxy Watch opens from the back. Once both bands are off, I can unfasten the four triwing screws securing the back panel. It's odd to see security screws on a Samsung, but I'm still just surprised to see screws. Will this actually prove easy to open? Well, to achieve its water resistance, there's a rubberized seal around the perimeter of the base. While not adhesive, it does have a good grip on the base, so we'll need to pry it open. Using a few plastic picks and a jimmy tool, did the job. But before lifting it all the way off, there is one cable beneath that I need to unplug. And with that, we're now inside the Galaxy Watch. That was a simple, low-risk opening procedure. With a view inside, we can see the culprit to the display issues, salt water damage, which looks to have entered through the microphone. Samsung does approve this device for use in ocean and pools under certain conditions. I don't know how it was used, so I can't say for sure if it was outside these approved conditions. Many people don't read the fine print. Do you know most companies don't cover water damage under warranty, even if your device is supposedly water resistant? Proceeding, I'm going to remove the motherboard from the watch so we can see if there's any more damage caused by the salt water. Thankfully, it seems to have only grazed the edge of the board, so after a clean, there shouldn't be anything to worry about. You might be wondering where the battery is. It's mounted to the underside of the board. To remove it, the power button must be unadhered before removing the one Phillips screw. Lifting up the motherboard leaves the battery tray behind, which also houses the vibration motor. Before we begin reassembling, I'll clean up any residue left by the salt water. If you're working on one of these yourself, be careful of the power button cable, which is soldered in place. If you damage it removing the battery tray, repair will require soldering a new one in place. Of course, to fix the watch, we'll need a new screen. I ordered a new Samsung replacement part for 120 Australian dollars. That's quite pricey for a 4.4 centimeter screen, but it's a third of the price of a refurbished display for a few year old Apple Watch. The Galaxy Watch display comes attached to a new frame with buttons, microphone, and speaker already installed. Having the watch open from the back proves much more repair friendly, as there's no risk of damaging the display trying to replace the battery, and if the screen does need a replacement, it's still really easy. All I need to do is drop in the motherboard and connect a few flex cables. Flipping the watch over, we can press the power button and see the watch come to life. I'll test the new screen making sure the touch works as well as the buttons on the side. I found the back button wasn't working. Back inside the watch, I can see its flex cable is sheared off. I didn't think I could have caused this, and looking back at when I took the screen out of the packaging, you can see it's missing here too. Thankfully, we have the old screen assembly that I can salvage the cable from, but I'll need to take the motherboard out again to gain access to it. The button sits quite freely inside, with it only being held in with two plastic clips, allowing me to pull the button out with my tweezers. I'll need to repeat this a second time to remove the good button on the old housing. Then it can just be pressed back into place. Crisis has been averted. Thankfully it was something simple that I could just swap across, and the main display cable wasn't the one that had been damaged. Proceeding, I can reinstall the motherboard and retest the watch. Powering it back on, the back button now works as it should.
Proceeding, it's time we got that back panel reinstalled. It needs a bit of cleaning first, as it also has some salt residue left on it. Once it's cleaned up, I can attach its one flex cable to the motherboard of the device before we position it down into place. To ensure the screws don't loosen over time, I'll apply some thread locker to each of the four tri-wing screws before fastening them into place. With the watch back in one piece, I can remove all the plastic protective film covering the edges and front display panel. It's always good practice to clean secondhand products, so before attaching each band, I'll wipe them down using some alcohol. After the two bands are attached, we're done. So this is it, the Samsung Galaxy Watch Active 2. Despite its size, it's really easy to work on. Battery and display repairs are just as easy as a Samsung smartphone. The only thing of concern is the soldered on power button, which could be damaged by a careless technician. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the Smartwatches playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.